so Max Air fans are known for having a few common issues, one of which has its own special term coined for it, which is the green light of death. I had my last Max Air fan for three years before one night I got this green light of death and my fan just went crazy and was making noises and suddenly just no longer worked after that. So I want to talk about a few problem solving solutions, but today I'll also be demonstrating one super simple action you can take to avoid a common issue that actually is the one that led to my green light of death. So some reasons this could happen are inconsistent incoming power, the lift motor could be inhibited, a bad electrical board, or moisture and condensation are actually known for building up on the fan and then dripping down onto the unprotected motherboard. The last one is actually what we'll be focusing on today, but I want to be clear that this is not the only thing that can cause that green light of death. And I have seen some comments saying that the company has made steps recently to fix these issues, um, especially the over voltage issue and the moisture dripping issue. And I have noticed a decline in Reddit posts, YouTube videos, complaints, etc. in the last like two years. However, there are still a lot of people who are living with fans that aren't these newer fans with the newer motherboards. Um, for example, the van that I just sold that I've been living in for years, that's still an older fan that could still have this issue. So I just still want to talk about it today, but also, so that was, that was fact, right? Like that was just fact. Here's my opinion. Um, I have seen the new motherboards and the old motherboards, and I just really am not seeing a difference. Like I, I can show you some images of the before and after, um, and feel free to weigh in on your opinion. But in my investigation, I actually think uh, the decline in complaints and posts could be people are just learning how to deal with the issue easier on their own. They're learning this little fix to be able to avoid it. Um, and I don't think it has to do with them fixing it, but that is an opinion, not a fact. So. <laughs> Either way, I think when it comes to the condensation issue, this board just does not look protected enough to me. So I'm just going to be safe rather than sorry since the last time I was like in New York City, living on the street, had no power tools, no way to fix this, and I'd rather just feel comfortable when I'm going off grid knowing that this is not going to break and having had that extra step. Plus these motherboards are expensive, they're like a hundred bucks, and this spray is like 30 so if this happens after the two year warranty, they're not going to send you a new motherboard. They're going to ask you to pay for it. So here's what you'll need for this project today. A screwdriver or drill, painter's tape, safety glasses, mask and gloves, and finally conformal coating spray, which I'll link the one I'm using in the description. So a quick recap, basically what happens is when this vent is open, moisture can get in and build up and drip down onto the unprotected motherboard. So we are going to seal it off now. If you're doing this on an already installed and wired fan, it is super important that you start by turning off all power to the fan. Now remove the cover by turning these four knobs, which will give you access to the first four screws. Next, unscrew the knob and try to have a better grip on it than I did because, yeah. <laughs> After that, you'll likely find that your cover is still attached by a zip tie and a plug. Cut the zip tie and unplug the plug. Ugh. Which is actually on there pretty tight and took me a while to get apart with my weak noodle arms. Next, you can remove the circuit board. Mine is attached by just two screws. So another reason I thought it was really important for me to make this video today was because I have never seen anyone do this exact project with a circuit board that looks like this before. My circuit board looks different because my Max Air fan is actually the cheapest Max Air fan on the market because I'm broke. So it doesn't do as much as some of the other fans do. So I have this little baby circuit board. But my point is your circuit board may or may not look like mine. If it looks like this though, you will have some open connections that you need to cover with painter's tape to protect them. Now it's time to use your silicone conformal coating or clear urethane seal coat. This is essentially a protection coating for electronics. May displace oxygen and cause rapid suffocation. Yeah, we're gonna do this way over there. <laughs> this is very dangerous. Literally the back of the container doesn't even have directions that I could find because it is so filled with warnings about how dangerous it is. So please apply this using a mask, gloves, and safety glasses and do not apply it in or near your van or an enclosed space be sure to read over all of the safety guidelines on the back as well. So over the next few hours, I applied three coats of this conformal spray, and then it was time to put the fan back together. It was really that easy peasy lemon squeezy. 
To put the fan back together, start with screwing in the circuit board, then re-plug in the connections and use zip ties to gather the cords if you desire. Then before you screw in the first cover, make sure to put in the first half of the knob and then screw it in. I didn't want to use the power drill and tighten them too much, so, so I did this instead, which was very dizzying and not recommended, but you know. <laughs> so to finish reinserting your fan, screw in the knob and attach the bug screen by turning the knobs back. And now your fan should be protected against moisture and condensation. Also, if you want to learn more about the over voltage issue and how to add a voltage regulator or even to check if that is something that you're going to need or the problem that your fan is having, I'll leave some links in the description. I'm not sure if I'll be needing to add the regulator myself. I did not have to in my last fan, but I have had a lot of friends who have had to do so. So it's kind of like a game of Russian roulette here, or maybe I just got lucky with the last one since it was only wired into a power station in my last fan build. I guess there's only one way to really find out, to keep building this fan and to test it out. So thank you so much for watching and I hope this video was helpful.